Hello, my name is Yusef, and today I'm back with a very special guest. I have today Mathieu Lamérez with me, and Mathieu will introduce Statement Execution, API. Hello, everyone. Uh, quick overview of what this is. It's one of those little-known function, well, functionalities of Databricks SQL, the ability to be able to work with Databricks SQL via as um, uh, a REST endpoint. The objective of the statement execution API is to be able to send out uh, SQL statements and get answers directly via this REST, uh, REST interface. That makes it very easy to be able to build applications with low coupling type of approach, and therefore not having to, to have any type of drivers when uh, querying the SQL API. Now, how does it work? There's a couple of things to, to, to keep in mind when we work with the API. It has three different modes. Synchronous, essentially what I send out a request, my query, come back and wait for the answer to come back synchronously. Um, that is something that's very useful when we have uh, statements that are usually quick to answer back within a few, uh, within the next 50 seconds, otherwise it will be uh, um, if, if within the next 30 seconds, otherwise it, it will be canceled. The other approach is asynchronous. Essentially, I submit my statement, I pull the API to understand where it's, uh, where it's at uh, until it is uh, ready, and then I, um, I get the results back um, via, uh, via second, uh, a, second, uh, a second statement. The last approach, the probably the most flexible, is hybrid. Essentially, we start out async, uh, we started synchronously, but if the statement takes over thirty seconds, we can um, we can we can uh, we can call the API back to be able to get the statement to later on. Um, the other interesting approach with uh, the statement execution API is you can get results in different ways. The first way you can get it straight through the the interface uh, back. You you through a a JSON statement, something very classic, uh, but something that's a little bit less classic is that you're also able to get the, the, the result set um, using the link, um, either in CSV um, or through an arrow format uh, that has been that's been compressed. That is very useful when we're looking when when we have to deal with uh, larger result sets uh, that can take a little while to uh, to work with and parse. Um, maybe let's go through a very yeah concrete example. Just and I believe just to summarize a bit, so to summarize the SQL execution API is a way to query the the, the lake house using some APIs. So which means you can integrate this in a web page without any dependencies. That's right. Absolutely. It makes it very easy to be able to query your data lake simply using a REST API and SQL. That's amazing. And of course, we have three three uh, three options, as you mentioned, synchronous, asynchronous, and hybrid. And I believe you will show us a demo how how it works and some examples and also best practices. Let's make this very concrete. So let's work on my Databricks environment. Uh, right now, I have a SQL warehouse. I need to have an endpoint on which to be able to create with. So that's it right here. I just need the ID for it so that I know where to where to query that. Now, once I've done that. Let's move on to my favorite API tool, Postman, um, where I will uh, input and I will just uh, do my, uh, well, I query my, uh, my statements. So very easy for the API is that API 2.0 SQL statements. Um, and on a very basic basis, just a simple execution uh, with no parameters, I simply have to step at the warehouse ID, which I've just uh, put here my statement, um, and then here are where I put my, uh, whether or not it will be synchronous and non-synchronous, right here, yeah, wait statements 30 seconds, I'll wait 30 seconds for it. And what should I do after that timeout? If I put, uh, if I say cancel, essentially it will stop. Uh, if I say continue, it'll move into a hybrid mode. So let's just run this. Very simple statement here, set star from a range. Send my request. And this will trigger the, if the SQL endpoint is off, 
it will it will switch it on to make sure that the warehouse is running and since it's a serverless it starts immediately and then you can get results which means it's cost effective so right input my endpoint was stopped and now has started and given me my result back in yeah what are the results here oh here we go in eight seconds so that's the time it took to start the endpoint query and give my answer back. So right now, very simple approach in terms of a sp statement. It just gives me a statement ID. The fact that it succeeded, it gives me the schema. Um, and then I've got my results in the background. Now let's approach it slightly differently, a slightly more complex statement, something that is a lot more usable. Um, something let's have a statement with parameters. Now, that is something very classic when we're going to work with um, uh, uh, with applications uh, where I have a prepared statement and I have a number of different parameters that I want to put. Um, and to prevent any type of SQL adjustments, I want to decouple the, the two. So here I have a simple statement here uh, in which I have, I'm going to query the system stable from Unity catalog in which I have the lineage for any type or specific type of entity, any type of job, which is my first parameter that I have here, uh, for a given user, myself, um, and a specific workspace, one of my test workspace that I have here. Um, so as you can see, I have three parameters, which are in my where statement. The first one is my entity type, which is a type job, user ID, myself to understand which user is doing this, and my workspace uh, works, my workspace ID. In this case here, I want this uh, to be, um, uh, I want to be able to get all the my results directly. Um, and then I will do another approach and when I'll do this as um, asynchronously. So this is still a synchronous approach, uh, but with my statements, same thing. I send it out. It is running my query. And so I get back my results. Succeeded here. Uh, same thing approach. I get a manifest with my schema so that I can parse to be able to get my data. Um, therefore, a notion of chunks potentially uh, is that, for example, it's a paginated approach. So if I go one page, two page, it's, uh, and we can, I can also set the number of, of rows that, that, that I have. And here I've got the results, um, which is, well, chunk index on, this is my first, my first chunk row offsets. So all this is just one, I just have one page of data. And then I've got my array of data with all the information from according to the schema that is being, uh, that I've been put here. It's so amazing. The, the same thing this time, um, asynchronously, and I will do this slightly differently. This time, rather than getting a result set uh, directly in my answer, I want this to get through an external link with a CSV. So it's just exactly the same uh, the same query that I have, but this time, what I'll be what I'll be getting is I'll be I'll be getting a C uh, link to a CSV file. So I send this. Now you can see the the answer is slightly differently this time. I still get my statement ID, but I get a status pending, which is to understand you know, where where I, that, and then, um, and it is using that statement ID here, which I will be using to be able to query my results back. Now, to be able to query my results, it's the same thing. I slightly change the um, uh, the the API rather than just bring the statements API. It's for statements with the actual uh, query. Um, that I got in uh, the, the with the query statement ID that I got initially. So once I query that, and if the query is finished, query is completed, it is now succeeded that I can see, and I get my CF my manifest, but this time it's slightly differently. As you can see, the format is of CSV still gets the my my uh, background code and my schema, but the answer that you'll see is differently here. Here I get a link. To that so that is a secure link that has been um, uh, that has been uh, created um, and that is temporary. It is available only for the next thirty minutes, 
um, on which I can use to be able to download that link. And therefore I can call the API back a number of times in that 30 minutes window to be able to get that, uh, that CSV file. Just click on it and I'll be able to download it. That is actually quite efficient way of being able to get back large result sets um, since I don't have to parse uh, large JSON files, I already have that instrument. In that case, I asked for CSV, but I call so for for more efficient, even more efficient um, uh, data transfer. Um, I could use serialized format such as Arrow. Mm -hmm. and, and there you have it. And I have a question. Last question, I believe. Uh, can we modify the expiration uh, time, or it's a fixed? It's a fixed one. No, it is fixed, and you can okay. see it's given to me here how long I can uh, I can I can use it. the The idea here is that uh, we want to keep that uh, uh, sufficiently long so that we can get it back and potentially for long long real set, but not too long so that it can be used as a way to be able to do data exfiltration. Okay, okay, I believe it was <laughs> clear enough. And I really now see the value of using the execution SQL statement execution API. Uh, easy way to query the lake house in a web page, for example, or maybe an internal uh, application that can leverage uh, this in a very easy way. This can be done for visualizations, for example, integration with the customer portal. It could be for also data exports using an API with the integration with other type of tooling, uh, make it easy to be able to transfer. This has many, many different applications specifically in production uh, to be able to interface the data lake with anything that requires data from it uh, using a simple SQL queries. That's perfect. And without having to, and without having to use um, slightly more cumbersome uh, DDBC or DBC connections. Indeed, indeed, I couldn't agree more with you. Uh, so I believe. And, uh, uh, the, yes, if you have that's any question on API, uh, it's all actually pretty detailed on our AP on the API uh, documentation page. Um, to be look for AWS GCP on Azure, um, with the statement execution API it goes through all the details of all the different um, APIs which are available and how to use it. I will make sure to add the links uh, on the description of uh, the video. And I believe I shall say thank you, Mathieu, for being my guest. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Take care of yourself. Bye.